and it's a nice festive design on here with some Christmas trees, some uh, text and some uh, uh, Christmas ornaments as well. Um, this is for some people a print and cut job uh, for, uh, for me as well because this is a printed sheet and we're going to cut something on there. The only difference is with what we generally call print and cut is it does not use any registration marks because um, where the design is related to my box is not relevant in this case. It's only when I have specific text to put on a specific pos uh, part of the box that I'm going to use registration marks and those registration marks will then be scanned by the machine and my outline will be cut and creased on my uh, material. Uh, another misconception uh, which I've had a lot during demos is where do I crease? Do I crease on the print side? or do I crease on the non-printed side? Hmm? Well, in some cases you can do both. Hmm? Uh, to be on the safe side, I'm going to crease on the non-printed side because printing, uh, sorry, creasing on the printed side will relate to how well your ink uh, reacts to being compressed. Uh, if you have a uh, ink that cracks while it is being compressed, then the solution is to crease on the non-printed side. If you have ink which doesn't react under the pressure of the crease, then basically you can crease this on your on your printed uh, side quite easily. In this case, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm sure, but uh, I just wanted to show I'm not sure. Um, so I'm going to crease on the rear side because it doesn't matter where my design is compared to my print. I'm not going to do any uh, reading of registration marks. I'm just going to put on my sheet on the unit itself. Uh, so let me just position it on my machine. Go back to my software. When I press apply, what will happen is my beam will come forward. The vacuum pump is activated and I can then start to work. Uh. Uh, the only thing I need to do here is set my starting position. So let me just position this on my material so I'm sure that it's going to give me a uh, cut on the printed side. And then I'm going to go to my software to go produce and press output. So let me press output to sheet, run. And you will notice that all the creasing will be done uh, at the same time. Uh, so for both boxes. So GoProduce will finish, let's say, that method first before going to the next method. Uh, so uh, creasing itself uh, is quite easy and then cutting. Uh, cutting, you will see when, when I'm cutting using the uh, heavy duty cutout, uh, it goes quite fast. Uh, the only thing I need to consider is that, of course, small details will not be possible. Um, also, uh, when, I when I do a lot of boards, it could be that on a daily basis or on a, on a, on, on a uh, bi-daily basis, I need to replace my knife. If I do this with the EOT, which is the next box, uh, this will mean that uh, the EOT will last you a lot longer. Mm? The only big major difference between both of them is that uh, the EOT will be slightly slower because the uh, heavy duty cutout is cutting at, I think um, I set it up to about 80% of maximum speed, so 800 millimeter per second. The EOT is cutting at uh, around about uh, 300 millimeter per second, which is slower. But if you do this uh, uh, like in an automated production, so the only thing you need to do is put on the sheet, this will not interfere that much uh, in terms of productivity. So let's just wait until this is finished. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my, my box, assemble it, and we will see that b basically both have the same let's say the same quality because this is quite a simple box. If you, for instance, put some text or Christmas trees that you're going to cut out on under your box, oh, on your box, 
uh, it will it will of course be much nicer using the EOT. Now to assemble it, I'm not the the best doing this, but I'll try to do this quickly. So this is one, this is the other. If I push this down, I can push down this side and I can push down this side and I have my first box and this is cut using the EOT. Huh? Nicely, quite easy to assemble. Now let's try the same with the one done with the cutout. I'm getting better and better at making these boxes, which is good. Just in time for, for cr the Christmas holidays. And here I have my other one. So as you can see, they both look the same. The difference is this one is cut at twice the speed using the heavy duty cutout. And this one is cut using, sorry, the EOT at half its speed. The major advantage here is, of course, speed. The disadvantage is, is here you will have uh, you will be able to cut many more boards, uh, whereas here you can cut uh, a lot less boards before needing to replace your knife. So this is uh, just a consideration you need to do when you are, when you are uh, defining your workflow, especially. Um, defining your material manager uh, where you're uh, assigning your tool to a method is that uh, what is your productivity necessity. Huh? The faster you want to do, the more passive your knife will be because you're dragging through your material. The other, uh, the drawback is of course because you're dragging through your uh, material, you will have a lot more wear on your, on your, on your, on your knife, sorry on your knife and this will result of course in uh, needing to replace your knife a lot quicker. If it's just simple boxes, uh, of course. So I just wanted to take, uh, to keep this short and, and tidy. So we've seen a uh, pack clip, we've seen briefly the 3X, we've seen it cut and crease this uh, type of cardboard using uh, two types of tools. Now let's go back to our um, desk here. 